On April 14, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln met with his cabinet for what turned out to be the very last time. He reportedly told the assembled group, Enough lives have been sacrificed. We must extinguish our resentment if we expect harmony and union. That very same night, Lincoln was assassinated. The war was over, the president was dead, and people weren't yet ready to extinguish their resentment. Still, the nation had to figure out how to rebuild itself. Reconstruction has two main periods. The first was led by President Johnson and lasted until about 1867. The second was led by Republicans in Congress and lasted until 1877. Andrew Johnson was an avowed white supremacist who really wanted to leave the racial order as it was, and also he did not want to change the Constitution in any way. He appointed provisional governors, took black enfranchisement off the table, and pardoned nearly every Confederate who took the oath of allegiance. By December of 1865, all the former Confederate states except Texas had been readmitted to the Union, and with Johnson's encouragement, they enacted discriminatory legislation and blocked any organization that was trying to help the freed people. Reports of violence against freed people and northern visitors to the South convinced even moderates in Congress that Johnson's lenient plan was foolish, if not outright dangerous. So in March of 1867, they passed the Reconstruction Act, which placed the South under temporary military rule and required that new state governments recognize black men's right to vote. But still, Congress remained on a collision course with the president. So they passed the Tenure of Office Act, which required that the president get approval from the Senate before removing an appointed office holder. Johnson ignored this act and removed the Secretary of War for being too radical anyways. So the House of Representatives moved to impeach President Andrew Johnson. He appeared before the Senate to answer to charges of high crimes and misdemeanors. His attorneys assured moderates in Congress that if they acquitted him, Johnson would stop interfering with their reconstruction plans. And so Johnson remained in office by a margin of only one vote. With Johnson's opposition out of the way, Republicans in Congress passed a series of legislation and amendments that fundamentally changed the United States. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 defined freedom and citizenship and also defined the rights associated with that citizenship. The 14th Amendment codified these ideals in the Constitution, and some people have said that the first section of this amendment was really a second American Revolution. It declared that anyone born or naturalized in the United States and living within its jurisdiction was a citizen of the United States, and it forbids states from denying these citizens due process of law or any of the rights and privileges associated with citizenship. And then in 1870, it passed the 15th Amendment, which specifically forbids states from denying any man the right to vote based on race. By 1875, though, the radical coalition in Congress was falling apart. The presidency of Ulysses S. Grant, Union war hero, was plagued by scandal. The nation was suffering from an economic depression. The Supreme Court nullified many of Congress's most revolutionary acts and legislation and reports of violence against freed people, Republican politicians, and Northerners in the South took its toll on a weary Northern public. Republicans in Congress managed to push through one last piece of legislation, the Civil Rights Act of 1875, which forbid discrimination in places of public accommodation before being replaced by their Democratic opponents. It was clear that federal commitment to reconstructing the South was over. Democrats in the South seized control of local and state governments through a violent show of force and intimidation, and in the Compromise of 1877, President Rutherford B. Hayes agreed to recognize these fraudulent governments in order to secure his own presidency. Federal troops withdrew, and the period of formal Reconstruction came to a close, even as struggles to redraw the boundaries of freedom continued. Those struggles continue today.